Number one, when faced with besetting sins and bad habits, what are we supposed to do? Look at Romans 6. And these, these should be, just be marked and starred and highlighted. Romans 6, starting in verse 11, is fascinating. Did you know that there, there's doctrine all the way through chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 of Romans, and the first time that you get to a command is in verse 11. And that's the first, God says on the basis of all the truth about God, here's what I want your response to be. When faced with my body and mind and emotions getting under sins and bad habits, I look at God's word and I'm at a juncture. I can choose to either continue to what it says in, in verse 11, reckon yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God. What Romans 6 says, never get desensitized to sin. Consider yourself dead to sin's voice. Never get desensitized to the conviction to deny ungodliness. We are the other way. We're like the cows. Sin doesn't bother us anymore. God says, no, you're supposed to be dead to sin. And when it calls you, when it knocks, when it, when it gets you, don't let it get your attention. Say no. Reckon yourself to be dead to sin. Verse 12, don't let it rain. Don't let it take over. Verse 13, don't present your members. When we find ourselves using our eyes or our ears or our mouths or our hands for something, we have to say no. I will stop presenting my members as instruments of unrighteousness. Here's the positive side. But present yourself to God. Don't, 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 but do. And Colossians 3, 5, put to death your members which are on the earth. Kill any attachment to that sin. Don't, it's kind of like disconnecting the phone. It's kind of like stopping the service. It's like cutting the cord. Don't allow the direct feeding of sin in our life. Put it to death, he says. We believe God. If God says we can reckon ourselves dead, Romans 6, we can. If God says sin doesn't have to reign, verse 12 of chapter 6, it doesn't have to. If God says don't present your members, we, we are able to not. If he says present ourselves, we can. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Present your body. Say it's not mine, it's yours, and I want my mind renewed. What does Titus 2, 12 says? It says, denying ungodliness and worldly lust. How do we do that? Verse 11 says, it's the grace of God that teaches us to deny ungodliness. The instant we're faced, we get shot, we feel the dart and the heat, and we see it starting a fire. And that fire is drawing us away from God. And we pause. And in that instant, we remember God's way, and we're already drawn to Satan's way. And in that instant, when we remember God's way, we say, God, I want your way, not my way, my flesh's way, sin's way. I want your way. Immediately, he extinguishes the dart, stops the fire, opens a way of escape, delivers us, we, we experience this burst of grace. He is glorified, and we're reinforced that God is real. That's what happens every time. You say, like happens every time I talk, people say, well, what about Ephesians whatever, and what about Philippians whatever, and what about Romans whatever? And I go, uh-huh. That's why the shield of faith isn't that list. That's just part of of the manifestations of the shield of faith. Any portion of God that reveals his truth that we respond to in resistance to the devil and in response to God becomes a shield because we're acting by faith going God's way and not Satan's way. And that's what the Lord wants us to do and it's time for us to go. So this is what we have to do. It's time to stand up and as you stand up and pack up and put away your Bibles, What's your besetting sin? What, what's your bad habit? It makes Bible study completely different. When I'm reading the Bible, I'm not worried about you. I'm not worried about, oh yeah, the guy in the third row down on the left, he needs that verse. I'm looking at what God can do to transform me 
into conformity with Christ. And I am saying, I know the areas that so easily beset me. I know the areas that don't reflect Christ. I want to open those areas to the scrutiny of your word. And God, I want to yield to you. I want you to conform me and transform my mind. I want to put to death. I want your grace to cause me to deny. Each one of us should individually be mining the word of God, looking for truth that impacts our so easily beset sins and our habits, those parts of our life that don't reflect Christ. That's the purpose of Bible study. So everyone that doesn't study the Bible says, I'm perfect. I don't need any fixing up by Christ. No. The more you study the Bible, the more you confess, I need you. Only you can sanctify me. I'm inviting you every day to change me into the image of Christ.